Today we talk about Superman, just as soon as I put on my disguise. Roll the bump. Welcome to That Sci-Fi Show, the only show ever. And let's get right to it. Today, we're gonna briefly review every actor to ever play Superman. We're gonna leave out all the voice actors from the animated shows, movies, video games, and radio. That could easily be a whole video on its own. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something you'd like to see. But for this video, the person must appear as a live action Superman. So on to Superman, the Man of Steel. Since the late 1930s, Supes has been gracing comic books, TV shows, and movies with his presence. Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster created the character in 1933 as a villain bent on world domination. That was five years before his debut in DC Comics in 1938 as the hero. The first actor to wear the tights was Ray Middleton, who played the Man of Steel at the World's Fair in 1939. Here he is in the show MASH, since it seems to be strangely difficult to find a high-resolution photo of him out of costume. While Milton never had the chance to bring Superman to life on the big screen, footage does exist of his performance, and that gets him on the list. Next, we have Kirk Allen. This former Broadway actor portrayed Superman in Columbia Pictures' Spider-Man theatrical serial in 1948. The serial was 15 episodes long and told the origin story of our Kryptonian hero. It also introduced Lois Lane and Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, played by Noelle Neal and Tommy Bond, respectively, and featured Kryptonite as a plot point. It ended in a showdown with the treacherous Spider Lady, not to be confused with any of Marvel's Spider Family. Kirk Allen would do one more serial, 1950's Adam Man vs. Superman. This serial would feature Lex Luthor, who turns out to be the vicious Adam Man. Be careful with that spoiler now. It's an antique. Next, we have George Reeves, who played Supes on both the big and small screens. Reeves played the Kryptonian in the movie Superman and the Mole Men, which may have the most hilarious title of any Superman hero movie ever. He went on to do the television show Adventures of Superman, which aired from 1952 to 1958, and it ran for six seasons. George Reeves claims more firsts than an over-eager YouTube commenter. He was the first actor to play the last son of Krypton in a non-serialized motion picture, the first television appearance, the first color television appearance, the first Superman to take off, fly, and land without the aid of animation, and the only actor to portray the Metropolis Marvel in both a movie and a TV series. George Reeves was also the first alleged victim of the so-called Superman curse, something that we're going to ignore for the rest of this video because it's fucking stupid. That brings us to Christopher Reeves, who was adored by fans in his early appearances as the Big Blue Cheese. Superman the Movie, also called Superman 1 or Just Superman, was released in 1978, costing $55 million. Superman 2 debuted in 1980 and cost $54 million. Superman brought in $300 million at the box office, while the sequel netted just over a third of that at $104 million. Unfortunately, that was the end of Reeves' good fortune, as 1983's Superman 3 and 1987's Superman 4 The Quest for Peace did not do well, to say the least. Rotten Tomatoes gives them 26 and 12% respectively. I mean, damn. Both films did very poorly at the box office, with Superman 3 bringing in almost 60 million and Superman 4 netting just above 15 million. Those last couple of movies notwithstanding, Christopher Reeves became synonymous with the Man of Steel based on the strength of those first two films. I'll end this section by saying two things. If you like to watch bad movies for fun, then check out The Quest for Peace. And also, Superman, Slapstick Comedy, and Richard Pryor do not mix. 
Next up, we have 1993's Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, a television show that took the unique approach of focusing on Clark Kent rather than Cal el Soup would show up in each episode, but he wasn't the main focus. This series also focused heavily on the relationship and romance between Clark Kent and Lois Lane. The show starred Dean Kane as Clark Kent and Terry Hatcher as Lois Lane. It was a hit with fans running for four seasons, totaling 87 episodes. Next, another TV series, 2001's Smallville, saw Tom Welling take on the role of a very young Clark Kent. Now, we're not going to focus too much on this one because Spoiler alert, we only see Welling don the cape at the very end of the series. Smallville was the longest running live action Superman series, if it does indeed count as a Superman series, and it ran for an impressive 10 seasons and introduced several other DC characters. Moving on in 2006, fans just barely tolerated Brandon Roth when he played Superman in Superman Returns. You guys remember that movie? Because I didn't until I looked it up. I have to give this movie props though, just over $300 million is a small price to pay to get to pretend that Superman 3 and Superman 4 never happened. I think from now on, that should be considered fact. I am suggesting that we retcon real life. Hell, it works for comics. Aside from the superpowered offspring and the insane plot, the biggest issue I have with this movie is just how forgettable it seems to be. That brings us to Henry Cavill in his first outing as Superman, 2013's Man of Steel. This one is the most dissected, debated, and talked about additions to a franchise since the Star Wars prequels. Coming on the heels of Marvel's The Avengers and Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, superhero hunger was high and it was only fitting that the most iconic of all the DC superheroes would join the party. Critically, however, the views were less than positive. Yet, Man of Steel was incredibly popular at the box office, earning $668 million worldwide from its huge $225 million budget. Since Man of Steel was a financial success story and Warner Brothers and DC Comics needed a way to compete with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Man of Steel acted as a launching pad for the DC Universe, leading to Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, and the upcoming two-part Justice League movie. While Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice suffered from the same critical reaction as Man of Steel, it grossed over $173 million worldwide. Likewise, Suicide Squad suffered from poor reviews and still grossed $745 million worldwide, not to mention that it just won an Oscar for Best Makeup. To be blunt, I trust Marvel to make a good movie. They could probably make a Howard the Duck movie that would at least be watchable, but it still remains to be seen whether or not Warner Brothers and DC Comics and Zack Snyder are up to the task. And finally, we have Tyler Hoechlin, who was introduced as Superman in the second season of the 2015 Supergirl series. This series focuses on Kara zor -El, Superman's cousin, and takes a much more light-hearted approach than the recent DC movies. And now, because Superman has an 80-year history, it is time for the lightning round. Johnny Rockwell starred in an unaired Superboy pilot. Bob Holliday played a singing Superman on Broadway. Dave Wilson did a TV show musical special where he played Superman. There was an unauthorized Turkish Superman adaptation adaptation titled The Return of Superman. I also want to mention Superboy starring James Hayes Newton in 1988. The second, third, and fourth season of Superboy was retitled The Adventures of Superboy in season three and featured Gerald Christopher as Superboy after Newton performed poorly, demanded a raise, and got a DUI. 
Wow. White Collar's Matthew Bomber starred as Superman in a series of Toyota Prius commercials in 2009. Daniel DiMaggio played a 13-year-old Cal L in the Supergirl episode for The Girl Who Has Everything. Jeff East was the teenaged Clark in the 1978 Superman The Movie, even though his voice was dubbed by Christopher Reeve. Whew. So that's every live action Superman I could find, and in part two of this episode, we'll look at every actor to ever play the Caped Crusader. And don't forget to tell me in the comments section below if you would like to see a video about all of the people who have voiced Superman in cartoons, animated movies, video games, etc. Come back next time when the topic will be, I'm a jackass, oh my God, I can't believe he's still reading this. <laughs> you, 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 you're gonna edit that out though, right? They're gonna edit it out. In the words of Scott Nice Wonder, please hit that big sexy subscribe button if it's your first time here. And in order to keep my previous promise to thank every one of you or die trying, I'm gonna start thanking you four or five at a time. So thank you to Nerd Zone, Captain Carmine, Craving Skate 05, and Not 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 Scott. Until next time, I'm Jay Parks, as far as I know. <laughs>